duo fish. Love, guilt, pity, and remorse. All of these are part of the normal range of emotions that the average person feels. The pathological mind of someone compelled to abduct, sexually abuse, kill, and mutilate is almost impossible for most of us to comprehend. Why is it then that we are so fascinated by gruesome serial killers? Maybe we fear the unknown, or perhaps we simply desire to learn about their way of thinking in order to avoid death ourselves. But what about the serial killers who were never identified or caught? If they were smart or lucky enough to never be apprehended, what chance of survival do we have with our limited knowledge about the ones who were caught? Number 15 Mommy is in the trees Two double murders occurred in the forest south of Tacoma, Washington, four months apart in 1985. In the first double murder, the recently married Stephen Harkins and Ruth Cooper left their reception at camp near Tule Lake. Four days later, Stephen was found shot to death in his sleeping bag with his dog nearby, also shot. But it would be two months before Ruth was found decapitated with a tube sock tied around her neck. That December, Diana Robertson, her two-year-old daughter Crystal, and her boyfriend Mike Reamer went to a nearby forest to find a Christmas tree. Later that evening, Crystal was found alone wandering a department store and was identified by her grandmother but could only state, Mommy is in the trees, when asked what happened. Two months later, the remains of her mother Diana were found buried in the snow along a logging trail stabbed 17 times with a familiar tube sock tied around her neck. Mike's truck was nearby, covered in bloodstains with a note stating, I love you Diana, inside. Mike was believed to be the murderer of both couples until, in March 2011, a piece of his skull was found in the forest only a mile from where Diana's remains were found, and police ruled him out as the killer, leaving the true killer unidentified. Number 14 The Bloody Benders Lone individuals with corrupted minds are certainly the most commonly known type of serial killer, which makes the story of the Bloody Benders all the more terrifying. They were a family in name only, as it is suspected that none of them were related, or just the father and son were. In any case, for three years after they opened their shop in Labette County, Kansas in 1870, travelers in the area would mysteriously disappear. Up to 20 people were murdered and robbed by the benders as they would kill wealthy individuals in their home by way of a hammer and a slit throat before storing them in the cellar underneath a trap door. After a doctor had disappeared, the townsfolk decided that everyone's home would be searched. Unfortunately, for a week, no one noticed that the Benders had already skipped town. It is unknown what happened to the Benders, or who they even were, but the $3,000 bounty that was placed on them was never collected. Number 13 Axe Murderer of New Orleans Over the course of one year, from May 1918 to October 1919, a serial killer both killed and injured six to seven people in a series of attacks using straight razors, a lamp, and most frequently, an axe. Why? Many of the victims were wealthy enough to rob, yet no items were ever taken after the attacks, as if the killer didn't care about money. A letter apparently written by the axe man has him referring to himself as a spirit and a demon simply attacking on whim. The letter also said that he would once again kill 15 minutes past midnight on March 19th unless jazz was playing in the area. Much of New Orleans was packed with amateur and professional jazz bands after this, and true to his word, the Axeman did not strike again that night. The murders would cease a few months later as quickly as they began, with the killer left unidentified. Number 12 Hue Ziong Serial Murders for almost five years after 1986, the most infamous South Korean serial murders took place in Hwe Ziong, Jainagi province. Ten women ranging from the ages of 13 to 71 were brutally raped and slain by the same man who was easily identified as the murderer due to his modus operandi. He would strangle his victims with their own clothing. Over two million police were involved in the case, DNA and hair samples had been collected, and over 20,000 suspects had been questioned. And yet, it seems as though the killer simply disappeared. The statute of limitations on murder is 15 years in South Korea, and since the last murder took place in 1991, 2006 marked the year the killer can no longer be convicted for his crimes. Number 11 The Zodiac Killer 
At this point, I would be surprised if many of you currently watching this video haven't already heard of the Zodiac Killer. From the 1960s until the mid-1970s, the Zodiac Killer terrorized Northern California as he killed at least five people, but perhaps up to 37 if his letter to the Chronicle is true. His attacks nearly always occurred on young couples and were either accomplished with a gun or knife. What made him infamous were his cryptograms that he sent to the police and newspapers, of which only one out of four was solved. The solved letter exclaimed his love for killing people and how it would make them his slaves in the afterlife. 1974 would be the last time that the Zodiac Killer was heard from, and needless to say, the killer was never caught or identified. Number 10. Redhead Murders. This case seems statistically improbable due to the rare similarities that all of the victims shared. From 1978 to 1992, in Pennsylvania, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Mississippi, 8 to 11 women, all with red hair, were found abandoned along the highway in different states of decomposition. Only two of the possible victims were ever identified based on their remains, making this case incredibly odd as red-headed women make up only around 1% of the world's population. At least one of the women was identified as a mother based on the cesarean scar she had, Yet still, most remain unidentified and no evidence to identify the killer was ever found. Number 9 Texarkana Moonlight Murders In the small city of Texarkana, just after World War II had ended in 1946, a lone male assailant began attacking couples on a secluded road known as Lover's Lane to the town. His first attack was unsuccessful as he tried bludgeoning his first two victims to death but they both survived. After that, he always used a gun. One couple and two friends were found murdered by the newly dubbed Phantom Killer and all four victims had been shot multiple times in the head and body. Once the local newspaper printed the story, people panicked. Curfews were set and both gun and lock sales went through the roof. The fifth and final murder took place in a home, with a farmer being killed and his wife being greatly injured by gunshots from the window. After that, the murders stopped, and though a large investigation took place, the murderer's identity remained unknown. Number 8 Long Island Serial Killer The majority of serial killers who manage to escape capture usually performed their crimes decades ago when things such as DNA evidence and the best detective work had yet to have existed. However, it seems that there are still psychopathic individuals devious enough to slip through the cracks even today. Within the last seven years, up until 2013, the remains of female escorts, an Asian male, and a toddler have been found on Ocean Parkway by police. Many of the victims had been strangled or dismembered, and police speculate that anywhere from 10 to 17 people have been victims of this serial killer. Scarily enough, some believe that the killer may still be active today, and is perhaps working in law enforcement or is active in another state. Number 7 Paturus Park Murders Homophobia in today's world is usually nothing more than a fear of others that a person can't understand or tolerate well. However, this murderer was fuller of hate than the usual person and turned to killing gay men in the park. In the months between February 2007 and August 2008, 13 gay men were murdered in Paturus Park in Carapacuba, Brazil. Eleven of his victims were shot in the head and left in the brush with their pants around their knees. One more was bludgeoned to death, while the last victim was shot 12 times in an obvious act of animosity. The killer was dubbed the Rainbow Maniac by the media and is speculated to be a member of the police, though no convictions have been made to date. Number 6 Jack the Ripper Likely the most infamous serial killer of all time, the story of Jack the Ripper is well known and horrifying. In 1888, the Whitechapel District of London would find themselves horrified by a savage serial murderer. Four of the five prostitutes who lived and worked in the slums had their throats cut before their abdomens, genitals, and faces were meticulously and gruesomely eviscerated with some organs being removed from their bodies. One, or more writers, sent notes to the Scotland Yard claiming to be the killer and one note in particular, the From Hell Letter, came with half of a preserved human kidney purportedly taken from one of the victims. The letter states that the other half of the kidney was fried and eaten, ending with a taunting message stating, Catch me if you can. 
Number five. Servant Girl Annihilator. Let's go back three years before Jack the Ripper murdered his first victim and instead focus on Austin, Texas just before 1885. A vicious and appalling string of murders and mutilations occurred from December 30th, 1884 to Christmas Eve, 1885, in which eight victims, mostly female, were slain. This nameless killer would wait until his victims fell asleep before ambushing them while they were still in bed with an axe. Three of his victims were dragged outside while unconscious before being butchered. A few were found with a spike impaled through their ear. Some theorize that the Servant Girl Annihilator and Jack the Ripper are one and the same, sometimes with compelling evidence. Links to these can be found in the description below. Number 4 The Atlanta Ripper Sometimes, serial killers can be motivated by an irrational and deep-seated hatred that leads to them murdering victims based on characteristics such as sex, age, or in this case, race. In 1911, just 23 years after Jack the Ripper terrified London, the brutal murders of up to 21 black and dark-skinned women were attributed to a single individual. Almost every victim was killed by having their throats slip very deeply, and unfortunately, many factors at the time impeded investigation. Newspapers spread fear throughout Atlanta and speculated that the killer was Jack the Ripper himself. Dozens of people were accused of the crime as hysteria ran rampant through the city, but a lack of real evidence led to no one ever being convicted. Thus, much like Jack the Ripper, the killer roamed free, uncaught, and unidentified. Number 3 The Cleveland Torso Murderer Another infamous case of graphic consecutive killings that took place in Cleveland during the 1930s. Every victim was dismembered and sometimes even cut entirely in half, with the cause of death being named decapitation for several of the victims. Many of the victims were found in advanced states of decomposition or completely missing their head, which made identification of many of the victims impossible. Death masks of the victims with heads were produced, but did not lead to the identification of most of the victims. Twelve victims in total were claimed by the unknown serial killer, which stopped after several suspects were institutionalized though the true identity of the killer was never discovered. Number 2 Connecticut River Valley Killer Over the course of nine years, from 1978 to 1987, an unidentified man abducted and murdered at least seven women for unknown reasons. All victims who were found were left abandoned in wooded areas near the Connecticut River Valley and had died from multiple stab wounds. Jane Borowski, a seven months pregnant 22 year old, was attacked by the man who accused her of assaulting his girlfriend before stabbing her 27 times and leaving her to die. Miraculously, she managed to get into her vehicle and drove to her friend's home in order to get help. Her attacker had pursued her in his vehicle, but once she had reached her friend's home, he quickly fled. The attack left Jane with a severed jugular vein, two collapsed lungs, a kidney laceration, and severed tendons. Yet amazingly, both she and her unborn child managed to survive the attack. Finally, a speck of good news in this morbid list. Number 1 East Area Rapist or The Original Night Stalker Now known to be the same person, The Original Night Stalker was active from 1976 to 1986. This white male in his 20s raped over 50 women and murdered at least 10 people in multiple towns throughout California. The killer's moniker was calling his victims to taunt and threaten them, as heard in this unsettling clip. At one point, a town hall meeting was called due to the attacks, at which a man said that the police must have been lying as no man would sit idle while his wife was being raped. Yet a few nights later, the very same man was bound and forced to watch his wife being raped, meaning that the suspect was at the town hall meeting. It's almost hard to believe how many times the original Night Stalker was nearly caught and yet managed to escape every time. He was pursued by police and civilians on foot at least twice and escaped either on bike or by vaulting fences on foot. 1991 was the last time that the original Night Stalker would be heard from when he left one final message taunting one of his previous victims before seemingly disappearing. Even with sketches, footprints, 
DNA, and several witnesses, the original Night Stalker was never caught and may be living as a middle-aged man today. Be sure to check the description for sources. Till next video, sleep tight.